to the track. The wall makes the leap and makes the catch. Amazing catch by Junior. He got it. A perfect game. 13 strikeout. And Barnes hit three high. Special moment for Barry Bonds. Swing and a long drive. Deep to right. Going, going, going. Goodbye. He has done it. He has changed the game of the night with one swing of his bats. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Champions Adjust Podcast. I am your co-host, Aaron Mashbitz, a.k.a. Jackson Stone, with my co-host, David Bodson, a.k.a. Coach Bods, Big Daddy Bods, Papa Bods, and in the house, co-host. and our third co-host, this beautiful little amazing Lola, Lola human dog our licking little, my face. Ooh, our, yeah. our Pitbull, our Pitbull uh, co-host. Okay. okay. I love Anyways. you. Anyways. I love you. We, uh, we normally, we're making a slight change here on, on Champions Adjust. We normally are going to do seasons. We did season one, we did season two, and the end of both season one and season two, we did uh, special edition MLB postseason episodes. Which I was seven for eight on my, uh, I think it might have been the easiest postseason award season ever to like project who's going to win. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to how good okay. you did in a second. Coach All right, Boz. I just got excited. But we, me and Coach Bosden are now being pretty consistent on this podcast. Yes. So we're going to kind of remove the idea of doing seasons and we're just going to drop episodes as frequently as possible, hopefully, hopefully once a week, if not once every couple weeks, if not every single day. But... This officially will be then episode uh, 32 of the podcast. So no more seasons. We're 32 episodes in. We're doing the best we can. This is the Champions Adjust podcast, and we cover everything from U sports to mindset to MLB to all the good stuff in between. Short hops to... I mean, short, short hops to bat, bat flips, flips, baby. baby. Definitely yeah. bat flips. We've yeah. a lot of bat Did flips. Did you see the bat spot. flip that led to a clothesline? I did see that. As Drupal Cabrera up. just beat the shit out of somebody. He absolutely <laughs> gave him the clothesline from hell, dude. He just came in there. Oh, my world. God. Kane would be proud. Kane would be proud. JBL uh-huh. would be proud. JBL. But uh, that's what we do on this pod, so we're going to make that slight adjustment. And we have, we have a few things to get to today. Um, the first thing we're going to get to is the excellent job that Coach Bosden did in predicting his MLB awards. Let's talk about the only wild card there that, that nobody really saw coming. That shouldn't have happened was Terry Francona beating out two managers who took sincerely less talented rosters to pretty cool heights. And why, man? Yeah. The rest I thought were pretty, I mean, I know you and I didn't agree on all of them, but the ones that I got right, I thought were pretty easy, in my opinion, just off the research I did. Yeah. The, the AL Manager of the Year, I just doubt, no, that and National League Manager of the Year, they were, AL had great choices. I just AL had the, great the third of the three choices I thought win. I won it. And I love Terry Francona, by the way. Yeah, I'm, all of him. I'm a University of Arizona alum. I'm a University of Arizona baseball alum. He is a University of Baseball Hall of Famer. He's a future Major League Hall of Famer. He has, um, he bleeds uh, red and blue for University of Arizona. And so I, I love that um, an Arizona baseball alum got his third manager of the year award. Yeah. That's awesome. I, 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 I thought that, I thought that, you know, there were, there were better situations. Sorry. Stop watching the game. The World Cup is on right in front of me right now. And it's, it's game one versus the whales. And I don't see one whale on the screen, which is... Kind of false advertising. Oh I think. my um, god! But yeah, I mean, I, I still think that we saw one of the greatest baseball seasons in the history of that the was world. So much fun in Shohei Otani, and he did not win. Most he, was, he wasn't player. going to, and so I think that's sad. Sure, I think it's sad because it was close. I mean, it wasn't that close. It wasn't close. It probably it wasn't, wasn't close. close. The votes probably weren't close at all. Aaron Judge. You know, had an amazing, fantastic, unbelievable season. Historic season. Historic season. Not the best one ever, but Shohei Otani did have historically the greatest You're season right. that any player has put together in the history of the game. And was number four in the Cy Young Award. So he was second in MVP and four in Cy Young. 
mm-hmm. could just give him the MVP, and he wins basically both of those awards because he's the most valuable player in the league. But his team not, is terrible. Not hit the most home runs, broke a record. Well, his team it wasn't made the just playoffs. The All of this stuff sort of matters. Was this close to a triple crown? That, that, yeah, know. that's cool too. Yeah, you I know? guess you know whatever. Um, so all, I, I'm not upset about it, but I still think it, it deserved a little bit more consideration. And then also I think Otani's season deserves a bit more recognition, but he gets lost in the in the win because he didn't win the MVP. And he's on a shitty team. And he's on a really bad baseball team with another unbelievable baseball player. Which is why it's crazy. You have like a guy like Brandon Walsh, who was a uh, pinnacle part of that uh, Phillies lineup uh-huh. down the stretch. And he was an angel. Right. Like... That's a guy who could have helped you, and you got rid of him. And right. it's, it's just, Syndergaard was also on that team. Syndergaard was also in the Phillies. He started the season with the Angels. He it's did. like, man, um, Otani will not be an Angel after, uh, you know, I'm going to make a projection. July July 31st, Shohei Otani would not be with the Angels, a uh, Los Angeles Angel anymore. I just, I can't imagine that he wants to resign with this team when he's losing popularity because of the team he's on. Right. Like, it's going to hurt his first ballot Hall of Fame hopes. And it shouldn't. And it won't, really. But optics right now say it could. Yeah. I mean, I know another really great baseball player who never won a World Series. So, is also not in the Hall of Fame. Well, that's a different reason why he's not in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's obviously referring to Sheila's Joe Jackson. And, uh, obviously. <laughs> obviously. But really good job, Coach. You did Thanks, some good man. job predicting those awards. I think, uh, so you know, congratulations I, to everyone. That every won. night I was um, watching these awards while putting my baby to sleep. Like, Beautiful. you know, feeding. And every time... Um, every time an award will be announced, I'll be like, ah, one for two, two for three, three yeah. for four. I think I was 0 for 1 off the bat. No, no I was no. 2 for 2 you the were, first day. You were solid and I was two for three. until Francona came. Yeah, because that was the second day. Right. Look at the year, done. And then that was also you know, contentious because Michael Harris versus Strider, and that was close. Right, but you picked the right one. Um, uh, so that's Yahtzee. Great. And I, I do want to say one thing that I, I, I heard during the Rookie of the Year interviews. Um, Brennan Donovan is a rookie, was a rookie for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. If you listen to our podcast, you know that I am already a huge fan of his. But, you know, he started multiple positions at every position in the field and won the utility gold glove as a rookie. And so they asked him during his interview before they announced Rookie of the Year, they said, Brendan, did you just, like, want to play every position Going into like Little League, did you just figure that out? He goes, no. Um, he went to NC State and he said, I didn't really figure it out until I got to college. Um, you know, when I got there, I was a freshman and the infield was stacked and there was no way I was going to start over any of those guys. And so I learned how to play outfield because I knew I can get playing time there. And Aaron, how many times have we said that to the kids we coach? Hey, learn multiple positions because you're going to get to high school and you think you're a shortstop, man. But if you're going up against Jordan Waller, was the shortstop at, at, at Jesuit for a while there, and now he's you know, he was a first overall pick. He's with the Diamondbacks. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a major leaguer in a couple of years. But you weren't starting over him, right? So you could be the, the the starting shortstop of your team, of your select team, and of your junior high and all this. You go to high school and you have a dude, or you go to college and you have a dude in that position. Man, I hope you know how to play other positions. And it, and it's and it's like you come in as a freshman. The best player on the team is playing the position you play at, but he's a junior or a senior. Mm-hmm. You then create intense value in yourself by being able to play another position and still working hard at the current at the position you aim to play at eventually. And then by your sophomore year, by your junior year, you're then you've had your two one to two years starting under your belt, but then you transition into that role as the position you want to play, but already have experience playing at that level. And you can do that at high school, you can do that at college, you can definitely do that in the, in the professionals. And so it's about creating. A, a value for yourself that you can't be taken out of the lineup. And that's through coachability, through doing whatever it takes to get the job done, through having multiple positions that you can excel at, and then understanding where your ultimate goal might be is the shortstop for Jesuit to start, and you can do that your junior year, and now you have two years or one year of varsity experience, which is very helpful when playing at the varsity level because it's very competitive and very hard, especially in the state of Texas. And that's important. And so if you can try to master some of those skills and positions as a 12, 13, 14 year old, man, and then you can hit on top of that. Wow. Un- unbelievable. And then it goes to show it even happens in the major league level. Yes. David Lovell, um, 
Coach Lovell, he uh, went to Pepperdine as a shortstop and played third base. Mm -hmm. And won a national championship. And won a national championship. And um, Michael Young started off as a second baseman, then played short, then played third, and then played first. Mm -hmm. And then had 3,000 career hits. And had 3,000 career hits. So and then refused, he stayed on the field. And then refused to bring his kid to our organization. <laughs> Dude, if Michael shout Young. Out, shout out Michael ever, Young. If you ever hear this, man, it was, I'm, I'm disappointed that uh, he didn't want to hang out with us more. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool that he came and watched his practice. Yeah, for y'all, I mean, I, I doubt we've ever actually said this on here, but uh, Michael Young brought his son. Uh, he goes to Santa Rita with a lot of the guys that we coached last year and we'll be coaching this year. And so, um, you know, he's, he's going to be a 13U baseball player this year and we're 14U. And, and so Michael came and brought his son out and his son practiced while, while Michael kind of like, you know, sat around and shot the shit with, with the two of us and Damon Holt. And, um, and uh, his son's a good little ball player and he just decided to, to keep his son at, at 13U. Yep. Um, we, our, our goal was kind of sell him on playing 14U two years in a row to really maximize it. But... I think Michael Young knows what he's doing. and Knows what he's doing, but he had a lot of good stuff to say about yeah. us and our program and the yes. way we handle things. And so, which is nice to hear. Which is nice to hear because that's a perfect segue into kind of what I want to talk about mm -hmm. today. Yeah. What I want to talk about is how kind of we got to where we're at. Sure. We just made a big decision in our coaching yes. careers to officially join Five Star. Five Star Performance Baseball. And bring all of our boys to that organization. Um, for those of you who don't know, Five Star uh, Performance Baseball is a national organization based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and they are known for just turning out draft picks and, and D Division One prospects mm -hmm. consistently. Um, and that's obviously not the. It's never. That's, I don't like saying that's the angle because that's not my angle. Of course, it's a good residual effect of playing for us and playing for Five Star and mm -hmm. playing for organizations. But um, I'm, uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but. Just wanted to kind of hit that real quick is that it is a national organization that gives the kids uh, a very broad, um, really, really very broad platform to jump off of to get recognition, right? And get scouted. And it's it's also about understanding our own weaknesses, mm -hmm. right? The three of us, me, you, and Coach Lovell, are really good at the things we do. Yes, we lack a little bit in the things that five star is really good at yes which is getting our kids the right looks in front of the right people to get them potentially to play at the next level not right. everyone gets that chance but you have to give yourself the best opportunities to be able to play at that level and joining five star allows us to do that to the best of our ability yes and so because then we still have the agency and the autonomy to coach the kids how we've been coaching them with the style that we want. Which was big. Because we're trusted by Linty. Linty Ingram. And so, but then what Linty and Five Star bring is when the kids go to 15, 16, 17 U, they're playing in the right tournaments, being seen by the right people, having the right conversations, making the right videos, having the right connections. Right. And all stuff we will learn as they go through that process, whether we're their coach or not, then we have a better grasp on what to do moving forward in case we take a ten-year-old team all the way up. And whatever right. our uh, whatever we have whatever we have going on after this season, we don't really know that for fact yet, and we can't say what we. But we do know that we care about this, yes. and the idea is that we're trying to do the best for our kids so that they can have the best chances possible to play at whatever level they want to play at. Yes. And that's the driving factor of everything that we've been doing since we decided to leave the Tigers, start Wolfpack Baseball, go on on our own last season, do these fall workouts and winter workouts, and then transition into a, into a big-time organization where we have a lot of extra things at our disposal to to get the job done at a higher level. Correct. And that was that was a really big thing is when we first found out there was a good chance we were going to be coaching with Five Star, but of course we had to sign off on it as well, was learning that, hey, do we have the autonomy to do what we feel is necessary for these kids? And thank God we were very trusted and are very trusted to do what we need to do. Um, and I, we already have a lot of uh, momentum going towards the spring. Mm -hmm. um, but also, yeah, it was. That was a huge part of it. As I've always said, even last year, I've got asked by a lot of parents, like, hey, are you going to be coaching them in the high school? I was like, listen, I would love to, but I don't have the ability to get your kid recruited. Mm -hmm. I just don't have that um, as a part of my, you know, big bag of abilities. Excuse me. Um, a big bag of abilities and big bag of, of, of you know, characteristics. I can't, I don't have the connections that you need. 
um, five star has that. Right. And so I could, in theory, you know, take take a team through and not have to worry about that part of it and learn that part of it because right. um, five star is known for that. Right. And. Uh, Nationally, they are known for that, and one of the, one of a few. They're one of two or three national organizations in Dallas. Um, USA Prime, I think, is another one. I, I honestly, I, I think that would be it. The rest are regional. I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, the rest are regional, and uh, I would I would put us up against that other organization any day of the week. So I'm really excited to be a part of this, and it's 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 um, known to be a developmental heavy organization, and that is to a T what we've always been about. And mm-hmm. so it could not be a better fit. I know several parents at this point from the five star side are probably listening to this right now. Mm-hmm. Um, or not right now, cause it's not out yet. But um, well, right now they are yeah, listening but, to But it. right now they are listening <laughs> to when they hear me say this, um, that they, their kids were already in this organization for that purpose. And I kind of had to spend time, I want to say selling myself, but, but explaining our, our, um, our, method. our coaching style and our method of how well it aligns with why they're with five star in the first place. Cause right. I care a lot more about getting your kid to where it needs to be as a human being than I do as a baseball player. Right. But my job is to teach baseball as well. And so I take that very seriously and your kid will become a better baseball player under us, but they're also going to become better human beings under us. And that's what separates us from a lot of other steps. Yeah. Because baseball is always the vehicle for the, bringing out the best in you. Correct. Right? That's why it was really important for us to be able to have this agency and autonomy to also integrate Champions Adjust into Five Star, into Center Field, which we will current, which we will do. We're in the process of doing. Bods is in the process of um, pitching. pitching stuff, integrating yeah. that, integrating his expertise, yeah, expanding his expertise. Yeah. All of this stuff becoming what we want it to become. Um, and it took a bit, a bit of time to get here. We went through the trenches a little bit. Uh, but everything that we've been about, the three of us meaning, because we've kind of been through this for a while together, you and Lova a little bit before I, I stepped in. Sure. Um, but now the three of us have always been about this. What's best for our players? What's best for them? What's best for the families? How can we get them as good as baseball as possible through the driving force of them becoming the best version of themselves? So when the game ends... They still have the tools to equip them to live the best life possible. But how can we get them to the farthest place possible in baseball? Right. How can we get them to varsity? How can we get them to Division One or JUCO or NIIA or whatever it is beyond that? And with the addition yeah. of Five Star, we're going to have the ability to do that. And so yes. my next question for you, Coach Bodson, sure. is how did you get here? In this place, I as a here, as a baseball coach. Oh, I think about like here because I live. Be in quiet. This is your house. Don't don't do that right. to me. <laughs> I'm asking you a serious question. Um, uh, luck and hard work, I guess, I think are the two. So I'm from, I'm from here. I'm born and raised here. Um, we have and, some new listeners. Yeah, I'm, I'm born and raised in Dallas. I went to school at the University of Arizona. I was lucky. I was never good enough to play there. I was good enough to work for free initially and eventually get paid to work for the baseball team as an operations person, as a student manager, uh, director of, uh, of equipment operations. I was, I was the clubhouse manager because I did that for the Rangers for 10 years. So I knew how to do that. Um, and just be a part of practices and learning how to set up practices and how to run practices from a Hall of Fame coach, Andy Lopez, who is my, uh, my coaching mentor. Um, and, and ironically, David Lovell um, played for him 20 years earlier at Pepperdine. So... I, I just I've always been a student of the game. I also you know because I said I, I worked for the Rangers, so I I was around guys like Dave Anderson and Scott Service and AJ Preller and Ron Washington and Buck Showalter and a lot of cool names that are out there. Wayne Kirby was it was a close friend of mine for years, um, who's now the first base coach uh, for the uh, for the Mets. Before that, he was with the Padres and. I just always wanted to learn the game. I wasn't as athletically gifted as, as you were or as a lot of other people were, but I was always a harder worker than anybody else on the field. And I just wanted to know the game better. Um, so when I came back to Dallas, I, I reached out to somebody who I don't I don't like talking about, so I'm not gonna mention their name. Yep. Um, and uh, he uh, helped me set up, he kind of connected me with, with David Lovell, who didn't know at the time, but I knew his name just through Lopez. and. He brought me on as an assistant coach and kind of taught me the ins and outs of how to coach a game mm-hmm. and how to run a practice, which I needed because I've been around it for a while, but like actually doing it myself was very helpful. And um, then, you know, I reached out to you, um, which you're going to tell your side, but you know, you and I as, as a head coach and assistant, like ran a, ran a, 
around a team that had won two games the year before. It was an awesome when team. We, when we took over them, and I think we won like a, like like 15 or 16 games mm-hmm. the year we had them and got third place in, in, in our World Series. Just not even like, it, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't this whole thing of like, Yelling and like you have to get better. This nothing. No guys, have fun. Stop putting pressure on yourself. Enjoy the game. Now, my first year coaching, I yelled a lot more than what I do now. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a been a huge difference between my coaching style two years ago and now, because um, I learned really quickly. Right, I'm self aware enough to know that like, hey, that doesn't work for me. That's not the kind of person I want to be. Not the kind of coach I want to be. And people don't respond well to it. Um, and so I've just been very lucky to go with. You've seen my work ethic to you know outreach to parents and communication, and and I spend hours on lineups before the game, the weekend start, just to have every possible outcome in my head of what I would do if this situation arose. I have I I, I work really hard. If you've never met me before, if you're or if you're if you're you know just new to to being coached by me, um, I I spend excruciatingly long just analyzing everything about a game before it starts. Um, and I think that's a, I hope, no, thank God that's afforded me opportunities to coach for better and better organizations as have gone on. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we just keep on going, man. That's kind of my background and my passion is, is literally just, God, I just want, I just want kids to get better. That's all I care about. I you know if you go, oh, and 30, like yeah, nobody's enjoying that. You probably didn't get better, but if that were to be the case, but at the same time, the kids got better, then I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Right. Like that's a very rare scenario where you go 0 and 30 and everybody gets better. Yeah. But if that were the case, I'd be okay with it. What does it, what does it mean to you as a person to be a coach? Like what kind of responsibility do you hold in that? It's everything. I mean, I want to say everything. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a husband and a father first, but from a baseball perspective, it is one of the most gratifying experiences I've ever had in my entire life. I, I sleep better when things are going well. I lose sleep when they're not. We're working uh, on that. I I I, um, I care so deeply for every single human being that comes into our lives, as um, as players and coaches and parents, as long as they're not you know those parents, which they, usually we do a good job keeping those uh, out of the organizations. Um, and and yeah, I, I I think that's a very loaded question, Aaron, of of what what it means to me to be a coach because it is it, it, it's it's unequivocally important to me to get to give back to this game of baseball that has given me so much and it continuously it's crazy because the more I give to the kids the more the game gives to me Mm -hmm. and it's the most fulfilling gratifying experience I can imagine with the exception of course of like raising my son which has lately been just so cool Um, but so is my favorite experience as a coach can I? Please. May I? Please. Um, no, we had that that, that double A team, and I put um, I put Cooper Sunt on the mound to start our, our third place championship game. And these guys again, they had won two games the year before together, and we came in we're in, third, we're in the third place game for the World Series, and Cooper Sunt's on there, and he pitches really well. But it's just it was time, so I put little, little uh, Easton Kowalski up there, and. <laughs> He was our closer, man. He had some some head issues, and by I didn't say head issues. Such a great kid. He just, you know, um, he was a twelve year old kid. He was like thirteen years old, yeah, and like man. you know, he just he he it's sometimes tough. struggled, it's right? Tough. It's he tough. struggled with mentally sometimes. Yeah, he had a lot of grit. That's and he's got a nasty fastball, just just such nasty curveball too. It was so much fun, and um, and man, he. <laughs> He, I, was, I was sitting there like praying to my dad and praying to God and praying to every God that I could think of. Just like, hey, let Easton get through this and let us get this win. It'll be so great for his confidence and Cooper's confidence and the confidence of all these kids, right? Mm-hmm. And man, he struck a kid out looking and I was like excited, but I was waiting for the umpire to say ball game. And then when he did, I just, I took a baseball and I spiked in the ground and I went and picked up Easton and I hugged him. And I was like crying. I was sitting there crying. I can't believe we just won this game. Oh, like, like man, hey, that was a long season. Yeah. It was our first season together. My first season as a head coach, yours first season as an assistant coach. We learned a lot about each other, mm-hmm. about ourselves, and about the game as we coached these kids. And to end our first season together with a third place World Series win for a team that won two games the year before that, like that was so gratifying and mm-hmm. such a an emotional experience. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other side where I'll, I'll make a mistake and I'll, I'll, 
you know, scrutinize it for three days and I'll call you and say, Hey man, I haven't slept in a week over this. And you're like, dude, you're the only person who cares about this. <laughs> you're the only person. I'm like, yeah, about I know. But like, I have to get better from this. I have to improve because kids don't deserve that version of me. They deserve the best version of me because they're kids and they're not even my kid. Like these parents are trusting us with these kids. Right. right. And I'm so honored that these parents trust us with that, that I have to give everything that I am to them all the time and you know to, to, to Lulu my wife's credit she knows during baseball season like even you know we're in my office right now and I've been uh, heavily recruiting for our organization in the spring and I've spent hours on hours on hours on the phone just talking to parents and kind of introducing myself and introducing our program and saying hey we want your kid to be a part of this um, and, and Lulu's just you know she'll bring me like a, like a beer or something like that while I'm doing it she knows that I'm that, that that's that's my passion Mm-hmm. to do that and to help these kids and you know now we're we're done for a bit and then once spring hits man it's uh i mean once basically full send again once january hits i mean yep. we have workouts in december also december 6th winter war workouts we got to get those uh, emails out so if yeah. you listen to this they're coming man that's no, I'll talk. Bo Hall. Bo Hall has emailed me or texted me like once every three days. Hey, are we doing winter? Are we doing winter? We are yes. doing. We are. We, we just, are. we have. We're doing a lot right now. We are. We're, we're going to sort yeah. our, our players from I mean, spring. And, we're, and, we, and we have gotten that sorted out. It's so, I mean, obviously, we're if you're if you're a parent of a kid that we're going to be coaching, we're not going to announce teams until March because we don't yeah. know what teams, but. Right. Well, um, we want to give everyone ample amount of time we have to show most of our got. Most of our players are committed at this point. Um, I would say 98% of all players are committed at this point. Um, which has been a grind to get uh, done, and uh, and that's why we haven't gotten the winner information out yet. But we will. The, we will. I mean, we have. We know exactly what we want to do for mm-hmm. the workouts in the winter. We just haven't sent out the emails yet. Correct. And we're still working on the uh, the payment side of yeah, it. Yeah, we know how much it's going to cost. We know what we're going to do. We know what we're going to do. We, we know, know how we're going to train them. We know the time frame. We know, we know the time the frame. We know the dates. We know the golf dates. We know everything. We just haven't put in an email and sent it yet. And we haven't, because we haven't set up the registration. We have to do that first. Right. So, but. Got to figure that out. Amazing, Coach. Thanks for sharing. Aaron, talk to me a little bit more about your um, <laughs> your journey into like being here today, like oh, as, yeah, as a coach. I, I was going to share as well. Yeah, uh, no, I just, I mean, I'm interviewing you now, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I fell in love with baseball when I was like two or uh-huh. something. Um, most of you listening don't know the story about my sister, but that's a time. That's a story for another day. You can share it on here if you'd like to. Like, Not right now. Okay, fair. <laughs> um, but there's a there's a picture of us with me in a bat and her playing catcher um, when we were very young. It's one of the most special pictures I have. So that's like my earliest recollection of baseball. And then I fell in love with baseball. And then around 13, I fell in love with my second thing, which was professional wrestling. <clears throat> and so you also had the base, best coach around that time too that you yeah coach about. Bodson was my coach he was he was 16 when I was what 13 or 12 I think I was 17 when I coached you my mom my mom trusted uh, coach Bodson to give me pitching lessons she was just dropping me off at the park she would leave for an hour and a half and then she would come back we would do functional fitness workouts so even as a 17 year old coach Bodson was a very trustworthy human being because yeah. my mom's a tough cookie to crack and if you earn I'm her trust I'm shocked if, now knowing her now I am shocked if you earn her trust you're, you're golden she'll do anything <laughs> knowing her today I am uh, shocked that she trusted me when I was 17 hey man she felt a good vibe from you sir <laughs> that's, that says something her and like three other people and then everybody else is like yeah that feels good whatever those three people mean the most then <laughs> Um, and so, yes, yeah, so then I went to Plano West High School. I ended up get, getting pretty good at baseball around my junior year of high school. Um, then I uh, was fortunate enough to go play Division One ball at South Dakota State. Um, we made it to the NCAA tournament. I won a bunch of awards and whatever. None of that stuff really means anything. Um, it means something to me. Yeah, yeah. Like you sell yourself. Um, yeah, anyway, so that was a great four years at South Dakota State. Um, and then didn't get drafted, thought I was going to. Had a pretty good year, my senior year. Um, and then I did three tryouts with the Braves to try and earn a spot. None of those worked out. And so decided to end my baseball career right there. I could have gone and done some indie ball and then probably made it to the minors, but didn't want to go that route. Decided then to start my professional wrestling career, which I did. That's why I say Jackson Stone. That's my wrestling name. You can check that out if you feel so inclined. And then all of that came to a head kind of when I, the story about my sister is involved there. And then basically I moved back to Dallas um, a couple years ago, about almost three now. And that's when Coach Bods and I reconnected because he was friends with my sister. And we reconnected. We got some lunch, got some food. He was telling me about the things he was doing in youth baseball. And at that point in my life, I did not like baseball. Didn't watch it. Didn't 
didn't do anything with it. All my friends from college would talk baseball, and I wasn't, I wasn't into it at all because I just hadn't got over sort of the resentment and bitterment and bitterness I felt towards the game about not giving me what I thought it should give me. But then coming to terms with some of that, figuring out my own mental health and my own mindset, um, and then having Bodson invite me to uh, practice and to the facility and see what all that felt like, all of this like beautiful things started rushing back towards me. I thought about my baseball career in, in a better way and like all the cool things that I did and where it took me and the friends I made. And so that led to Coach Bodson and I, like he said, coaching that team. Um, an amazing experience my first year as a coach, um, as an assistant, all that, and then transitioning into Wolfpack, kind of also doing an assistant role there, but kind of toggling between both teams like all three of us did. We just went to like a zillion games. Um, <laughs> yeah, the some weekends we had about... 12 games Dude, on a we weekend were in the car something. for like four hours a day at one yeah, point it was like, it was incredible but it was a lot it my was insurance a lot. premiums got like skyrocketed yeah and so uh we could have we could have done something independently but i think the best decision we could have made was then transitioning to five star and then all three of us will kind of have our own team per se i don't like to say have our own team because we're all going to be practicing together we're all going to be thinking about the lineups together we're all going to be coaching together just individually we will be at the games watching those certain players play um and so it's still it's still a unified front we're still all doing it together making decisions together so that's kind of led me to this point about coaching and now coaching itself whether it be through champions of justice the mindset program or whether it be specifically baseball coaching coaching uh young people has become a really really important part of my life and i take a great deal of responsibility and honor in that and I know when we're at practices and stuff, like fall workouts, I don't really speak to a lot of people, uh, parents, parents wise. That's not your thing. Uh, outs, but I, but, uh, I will start to do that um, if you feel like you want to chat with me or get to know me better. Don't do that, guys, because uh, he doesn't want to do it. I can do it. I will do it. Do but I like to express my feelings here on this podcast, but I'm mostly am interested in giving my time, energy, effort, and attention to the boys, which is what I do, what I do. But the parents are also important because they're your kids. You're raising them. You're providing them the trusting us and, and trusting us. So my my number one goal as a coach is to embody the values that I wish for the boys to portray. So uh, values of like honesty, hard work, resilience, you know, zestiness, gratitude, all Good of those word. things I try to embody and then teach to them and using baseball as the vehicle for that change. And so I'm grateful to be in this position coaching it's a deep honor and a deep responsibility and i been thinking about this a lot those of you that do coach and don't feel this deep sense of honor and love and joy and responsibility for it please stop coaching yes because agreed. everyone that you're around they're out there um you're doing a disservice to them you're not giving them your best self and so you're not teaching them the values that they could go out and be the best selves in the world. And so if you've been coaching for 30 years and you've gotten a little lazy and you're not doing things as sharp as you used to, think about why you're doing those things and what brings you to the field every day. And if it's time to step down or step away or reinvigorate yourself or if you're a coach who just screams and yells and, and thinks that's the right approach, also take a look. Take some inventory. Why are you doing the things you're doing? Why are you screaming so much at an 11-year-old? It's not that serious. Right. What is serious is that they enjoy themselves and they want to come back to play the game of baseball because most kids quit youth sports around 10, 11, and that's awful. We can't have that because youth sports are much deeper than just playing a game. We're getting socialized. We're teaching teamwork. We're teaching effort. We're teaching that you don't get things that you want all the time, but through hard work and effort, you can get those things. And so if you're a coach and you don't feel this deep sense of responsibility, to do the best you can, you have to look at yourself and say, why? And then allow someone else to potentially take that role on for you or get better at what you're doing so that you can become the best, so you can do the best for the people that you coach. And that's what I want to say on that subject. I love it. Coach Bodson just had to run out because his baby got home, little baby, his beautiful baby Mark. He was crying and I wanted to make sure that we were good. My beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wife, Lulu. Um, and My so beautiful thinking, wife, Lulu. I've been thinking a lot about that and that's why I like coaching with Coach Lovell. And Coach oh, do you want to make an appearance? Sure. Oh, come on. Is, come it, on is, it, is this his first modeling gig as a Champions Adjust model? Woo! Baby Mark! Oh, 
Oh, baby, Mark. Do, 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 baby, nice Mark. Do, 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 do. Hey, buddy. Oh. How's your head? Is he warm? He's warm. Get those He's, ears covered, bud. Yeah. He's, He's good. good. I miss you, buddy. This is Mark. This is my son. He is the uh, champion. Okay. The champions <laughs> adjust model. <laughs> And you can tell that the relationship between my best friend and my wife is just as amicable as humanly possible. We bros. Um, we bros. I love it. Um, so, yeah, this is a big old Champions of Just family. All I we're missing is awesome. Reezy Baby yeah. right now. And, uh, oh, yeah. No, I love what you were saying there. Hey. Because I wouldn't, you know, we'll talk about him, right? I wouldn't want anything less for him, right? When he plays sports, I want my son. When we- <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. When he starts playing sports, you know, I'm going to coach him, right? But I'm also going to trust other people to coach him. But it's going to have to be someone who I trust to instill exactly what you just discussed and what we do, which is it's okay to mess up, right? You're okay. Of course it is. It's okay to mess up and it's okay to make mistakes as long as we're on the up and up and, 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 and working hard here, mm-hmm. right? And that's that's all I care about. So my heart is melting because I'm on camera with you and looking at my wife and I have my son. I mean, there's no better way to end this episode. Oh, this is go great. Yeah. So From from uh, Baby Mark, Coach Papa Bodzin, Coach Papa myself, Bodz. and Lulu over there in the corner. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Cheers. Have a great day. Remember, champions adjust. Champions adjust. Champions adjust. Lots of love.